it's me, Gina, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do things a little bit different. Um, we're just going to have a little sit down conversation um, and chit chat a little bit. There were a couple of videos that I wanted to do and just sit down and, and chit chat with you guys on a couple of topics. Um, so you may see those sprinkled in with the little comedy skits and the busy bacon and things like that. Um, Today is going to be a little bit different of a topic, so if you're not interested in this, feel free to not watch it. Um, but recently, I had a surgery, and I was going to sit down and talk to you guys about it. If you really only see me on videos and through a little bit of social media, you might not have known. Um, but if you were my family or friends or coworkers, you knew because I'm pretty open about my experiences and my healthcare journey. Um, in case other people have questions or, you know, want to know that people are struggling out there and life is not perfect by any means. Um, so this video is going to be about the surgery that I just had on December 11th. I had a full hysterectomy, um, which means my uterus and my cervix were both removed. I also had a bilateral oophorectomy, um, which means that I had both my ovaries removed and my tubes. So basically I had all of my reproductive organs, female reproductive organs taken out. So the reason that I had this surgery done was for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that I do have endometriosis. If you're not familiar with that, Tom just took off running across the yard. I don't know what. I can see that through the window and all I see is Tom take off running through the front yard. So I don't know what's happening. Um, but anyway, I do have endometriosis. So please look it up if you're not familiar with it. It's very understudied. We don't know a lot about it. Um, but basically it is when you have endometrial tissue grow outside of your uterus and your endometrial lining and it causes a lot of pain. Uh, I had it, um, I had endometriosis. They suspect that I have like really small, like microscopic nodules of it on my intestines and that's why I have GI issues. 10 days out of the month, I would have very significant pain, pain that I would have to prep for. So I would start taking medications for a couple days before and then a couple days after. So more than half my month was made up of me either being medicated or being in a lot of pain. And this is pain that would cause me to be very uncomfortable at work, to miss family functions, to miss events. It just severely impacted my quality of life. Also, I have autoimmune issues. This is not going to turn into a what Gina had video because if it does, it's going to be four days long. Um, I will post one of those soon. But also my doctor, who is my surgeon, who is a wonderful um, OBGYN, thinks that or thought that I had an immunological response to my natural hormone production, meaning that when I produced hormones throughout the month, my body would have an inflammatory response to those natural hormones. Um, that I don't know if it corrected or not. We really won't know until I go um, continue to go through the process to see if I have any issues from that or not. But anyway, after many, 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 many years of failed therapies to try to help the endometriosis and the other issues that I had, we determined that I was going to have a full hysterectomy and the bilateral oophorectomy. I am 37 years old. I do not have children. This was not a decision that I made lightly. And like I said, it was a very long road to come to this decision. So hysterectomies are one of the most performed surgeries Per year, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of hysterectomies performed. I don't have the statistics. I probably should have looked that up. But it's a very common surgery. I think it's the number one surgery in female people um, in the United States, at least. So it's very common. While that being said, it is a very major surgery. You are removing organs. Um, there are multiple types of hysterectomies. You can have an abdominal hysterectomy where they cut you completely open. You can have a laparoscopic where they just do little bitty incisions. You can do a vaginal assisted, which is where they remove everything vaginally. You can have a robotic hysterectomy. Um, the purpose of me doing this video is just to tell you about my hysterectomy journey. So on December 11th, I went in and had a da Vinci robot assisted laparoscopic surgery, meaning that I had two surgeons working through the aid of a robot to perform my hysterectomy. I have three, probably about an inch long incisions on my abdomen and then one through my belly button. Um, they are almost completely healed. It's been six weeks, so I'm finished with my you know, main recovery process or period of time. So those incisions are almost healed. 
I did stay one night in the hospital. I know that I did a lot of research and reading and some patients that had the robot or a laparoscopic hysterectomy went through outpatient and went home the same day they had the surgery. Uh, my surgeon just wanted to keep me overnight one night. I do have a lot of other health conditions and she just wanted to be sure that, you know, everything was fine with me. Um, and I was out of work only for six weeks. So I went in for my surgery Tuesday morning on the 11th, pretty early. We had to get there at 7.30. My surgery was scheduled to be done at 9.30. I just went into the waiting room or the pre-op room, got changed. They got a lot of information on me. I met a lot of my surgical team coming in and out. And of course, I had my two IVs started. They rolled me back into the operating room. Um, on the way, they gave me some medicine to kind of calm me down. I uh, remember... <laughs> Hush! I remember the two guys rolling me down there. I remember getting in the operating room, and there was a ton of people in there, and I don't remember much after I got in the operating room. Um, I do remember waking up in recovery. I think my surgery took about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. It was pretty routine. I had been on some injections for about six months prior to my hysterectomy, so a lot of my issues had calmed down a lot, which was supposed to make the surgery a lot simpler. Um, in recovery, I do remember waking up being in a significant amount of pain, um, and they were trying their best to keep me comfortable. And then I was... <laughs> I was then brought back up to the room where my parents and my husband were waiting for me, and I was still in a good bit of pain. Um, one of the things that hindered me in this surgery, I feel like, is I've had a lot of issues um, in my life, health issues, so I very much misjudged the surgery. I anticipated going in, them knocking me out, me having the surgery, me coming back to the room, everything being fine, and boom, because I have a pretty high pain tolerance, so I misjudged it in a way that I was not prepared for. Uh, when I made it back to the room, I was in a significant amount of pain. They did give me some IV pain medications and then started to give me oral pain medications just because you can't leave the hospital if you're on IV pain meds. So the quicker they could get you off the IVs, uh, get the catheter out, they were... I was in the room maybe an hour and they were like, okay, let's get up and walk. Even with the IV pole, the catheter bag, everything, they're like, let's just walk. So we would walk up and down the hallway. They want you to get moving as soon as you can. It was a process. Uh, my dad stayed with me overnight. It really wasn't a terrible thing. It was just more pain than I had anticipated. I know um, I'm part of these hysterectomy support groups and things like that. And everybody's like, what do I take to the hospital? Do I need to take shampoo and all this stuff? And it's, it's a ridiculous amount of stuff. I wore sweatpants and a sweatshirt, a t-shirt there, and then a sweatshirt over the top of it. So I took an overnight bag and the main things I took of course were my cell phone. I took a battery charger. I don't have one with me but it's just a little battery pack that you plug up to your phone. If you don't have one I would suggest taking a very long cord to plug it in from your bed to make sure you have something to just do while you're there. If you're awake I played on my phone a lot. I was able to keep up with people kind of update them on what was going on. I took like no slip socks stuff that I didn't need. I didn't get a shower. I was only there one night, probably less than 24 hours in the room. So main thing I had was my, my cell phone, my battery pack. Of course, I took a scrunchie to tie my hair up with. And then when they took the catheter out, they let me put back on my sweatpants. I didn't need all the stuff that all these people were taking. I didn't take books, anything else to do. Um, one thing I would recommend is, I have it right here, is a wireless heating pad. I got it on Amazon. It's great. It has these little battery packs in it that you charge. Each battery pack, if you have it on high, lasts about two or three hours. And probably a good five or six on low. And my husband brought it to me that next morning. And this has been one of the best things for my recovery. So if you can get a wireless heating pad. The heating pad to me was a lot better than having... Um, any pain medicine. I was sent home with pain medicine. I do have some drug allergies, so I was given some pain medicine, told to alternate it with Tylenol. I came home on Wednesday, and 
lay down and rest. My husband got me up to walk. They said one of the best things to do would be to walk around. So we walked a lot. The gas pain was horrific from if you have anything laparoscopic and you've never had a laparoscopic surgery before, which I had. So I was prepared for this is that they pump you full of gas so that they can move your organs around and see them. And then that trapped gas has nowhere to go. So it hurt really bad up in my right shoulder and pain meds don't touch that kind of pain. So I was taking gas X. You can lay down on your right side to have that gas move up to your left side and you can try a heating pad. That pain for me was far worse than the pain of the surgery. I took my pain meds maybe around the clock for the first day and then I just took them mostly at night to help me sleep for just a little bit. Like I said, I was... So I took six months off, six months, oh my goodness. Uh, my doctor took me out of work six weeks, so I was on leave for six weeks. Some people go back after two weeks. I did since I had a full hysterectomy, and they take your cervix away. They have to sew the top of your vaginal canal together in what they call a cuff. That takes a really long time to heal. If that tears or something happens to that, then that's emergency surgery. You're at risk of your intestines coming out. Um... Uh, you're in the hospital and in recovery for about three months, and that's not something that you want to happen. So I was out of work for six weeks. I couldn't vacuum. I couldn't drive the first two weeks. I couldn't lift anything more than five pounds the first six weeks, and it was a process. I had gotten a bunch of stuff to do while I was home, including like Legos, coloring books, video games, movie setup, cross-stitch, anything I could do, and I really didn't feel like doing anything. I was able to get out and walk around to see my family, who we all live here together. Thank goodness. Um, my parents uh, stay close by, so they were able to take me to like ride around, to go get something to eat, to just get out of the house so I didn't get depressed since my husband went back to work. And I just really didn't feel like doing a lot of anything but sitting there. The pain wasn't bad. You're just exhausted. It takes a lot out of you when you have something like that done. And I would try to do too much because I didn't want to sit here. So like... Tuesday, I got out of my surgery. That's Saturday or Sunday night. I think that's Sunday night. I cooked dinner for my entire family, which is, how many people is that? 11 people with two kids, plus two kids. And I was wiped out for the next day. So I'm not somebody that knows how to rest. Sitting around and doing nothing is good on your heating pad. But for some reason, I just couldn't do that. So... It was a very hard process for me to manage. Um, being six weeks out, I have no restrictions anymore. I was told I had to take another week off of work to make it seven weeks recovery just because I was having some bladder issues. So if you're not familiar with anatomy, you have your bladder here if you're a female and your uterus sits on top of it and then your intestines sit on top of that in a very basic way of explaining it. So when they do a hysterectomy, they have to kind of peel your bladder away from your uterus take your uterus out, and then place your bladder back down. So your bladder goes through quite a bit of trauma during the surgery, and it can take months and months for your bladder to fully heal back up. So I had a lot of issues with pain. It felt like I had glass shards in my bladder. It was worse than kidney stone pain when I was when I passed kidney stones. And then your intestines kind of settle down a little bit, and they're also kind of over there on the left side of your body while they're moving stuff around so it gets inflamed. I have a lot of GI issues and autoimmune responses in my stomach and intestines. So that flared everything up. So the majority of my recovery has been trying to tame my GI inflammation and to get my bladder back under control. And it's not been a fun process. I lost a lot of weight quickly because for a couple weeks there, I was not able to eat anything. I didn't want to drink anything. I was severely nauseous, vomited, just stomach cramping. Like right now, I'm still not great, and I still have my heating pad. I have my heating pad going right now while we're having this conversation. And like I said, the heating pad has been a savior. If I decided I want to go on road trips or something, I took my wireless heating pad. I was able 11 days after surgery to make it to a hockey game because me and my husband have season tickets to the hockey t team that's local to us. And we wanted to go watch this one particular game we had tickets to. So they allowed me to take my heating pad in. I was able to go use that. Like I said, heating pads have been awesome during this recovery. Um, but it it's not been fun. Uh, a lot of people were like, oh, I had that done. I was up in a week ready to go. 
And it makes you feel bad when you're not able to just jump up and be that person. I kind of felt like the way people taught that I would have six weeks vacation off of work and feel like doing all this wonderful stuff. And granted, I've been able to do some things. I've been able to take a couple like 30 minute trips out, maybe to the mall, walk around with my parents, go with my husband somewhere. I have been, I felt like cooking dinner here for my family to come down and eat just so we can get everybody together, which automatically makes me feel better. Um, but it is a process on your body and your body has to heal. Um, and a lot of people go through emotional issues. I was not to that point. Like I got a little bit depressed just sitting around the house, not feeling good, but being 37 and not having kids, I, with all of my health problems, I had kind of already accepted the fact years ago that I would not have kids of my own, that I would need to foster or adopt to have children. So I didn't go through that emotional response that some women do when they can't have kids after this or have any more kids after this. And that's a big thing my doctor talked about was to make sure I was ready for that emotional burden to come on. And I didn't have it. Um, really, it is a little bit emotional to know that as a woman, all of your reproductive organs are gone. And you know, for a little while, you feel like you may be a little less of a woman. Um, and I went through that and probably still going through that, but I'm still me. I'm hopefully going to be a me that feels so much better. I already feel so much better than I did when I had the surgery. So we're on the upswing of this, um, just trying to get all the little odds and ends tied up together. Being that I did have my ovaries removed, I do have to start hormone replacement therapy because I was put, obviously, in automatic surgical menopause. Um, if you men are watching this and you're still watching this, I'm sorry. This is really not a men video. This is more of a women video. And an FYI, in case you're going to have a hysterectomy, if you're not, you probably don't want to watch this video. <laughs> um, but I did start directly on hormone therapy. I'd actually been on hormone therapy six months prior to my hysterectomy because I was on Lupron, which is an injection that I did monthly that put me in medicinal menopause. So I had been in menopause six months before I even started and before I even had the hysterectomy. So I was used to the hormone therapy. I don't have hot flashes. I don't have mood swings, which I never really had those anyway, PMSing. I haven't gained weight on it. I haven't had a lot of issues. I don't really notice a lot at all. I will have an occasional, occasional hot flash, mostly at night, and it does not last very long. Um, but really, the hormone therapy is to help me make sure, you know, your hormones do a lot. So keep your bones strong from going into osteoporosis, just keep everything running like it's supposed to um, because I wouldn't have gone through menopause probably in the next 10 or 15 years. So it's just a way to keep all of my body in check. And like I said, I'm hoping that um, this surgery is what I'm hoping it will be. Maybe in a year I'll look back and be like, oh, this was best decision I ever made. It was a bit of a rough road after having it though. And this comes from somebody who is very experienced with different illnesses and diseases and health conditions that take a lot of adjusting around and getting used to. I will probably make some other type of video on that maybe a little bit later. But I did want to sit down and go through with you guys what my recovery journey and what my surgery was like for strectomy in case you guys had to have one in case somebody you love or you know just had one or is going to have one. I did want to go through this with you guys. Like I said, I'm very open with my health condition and with my um, any of my things that I've gone through regarding my health or my illnesses. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Let me know and I'll answer the best I can based on my experiences and what I have gone through. And we will be doing some more of these little sit down videos. So I hope you guys don't mind them every once in a while. And we will see y'all next time. Stay sweet, y'all. Come cut it off, Tom.